Hi there everyone, it's Mr Lundberg here from the Social Studies Department and I'm here today to talk to you about an event called Holocaust Memorial Day. Holocaust Memorial Day is commemorated on January the 27th every year and coincides with the liberation of one of the most famous concentration camps, Auschwitz, back in January 1945. The Holocaust, which is also known as the Shoah, was the genocide of European Jews during the Second World War and between 1941 and 1945, Nazi Germany and their collaborators killed or murdered over 6 million Jews across German-occupied Europe, around two-thirds of the entire Jewish population of Europe. There were over a thousand concentration camps established by the Nazis after they came to power in 1933 and over six million people, as I said, were killed in these camps. Holocaust Memorial Day is held every year on January the 27th to help us remember those who lost their lives during the Holocaust and give the current generation of people the opportunity to learn about it and some of the stories of those who were impacted by it. Each year the Holocaust uh, Memorial Day has a particular theme and the theme this year is Ordinary People and I'm going to talk to you now about some of the people who were impacted by the events of the Holocaust. Arik Hirsch was born in Poland in the year 1928 and was held in several concentration camps during the Second World War. He survived the war and he moved to England in 1945 but many of his family perished in a camp called Chelmno which is in modern day Poland. He is still alive to this day and at the age of 94 still gives guided tours of Auschwitz and back in 2009 he was actually awarded the MBE for services to Holocaust education. Truda Silman was born in Czechoslovakia in the year 1929. She travelled alone to England in 1939 to escape the Nazis and never saw any of her family again after this. She knew that her father was killed in Auschwitz, but still to this day doesn't know what happened to her mother. She went to boarding school in Cornwall and later went on to university where she became a prominent biochemist and university lecturer. Martin Kappel was born in Germany in the year 1930 and he and his family were captured by the Nazis and taken on a march to Poland. He and his sister were able to escape to Britain as part of the Kinder Transport Programme, but most of his family died in Poland. He and his sister survived the Blitz and he then went on to become a very eminent scientist and a university lecturer as well. Ruth Rogoff was born in Germany. Her family travelled to Prague where she was separated from her father and lived in constant fear of being de deported or taken from the country. Along with her brother and her mother, she was able to secure a visa and transport to England and fortunately for her, her family was reunited and they all managed to survive the war and she continues to speak to this day about her experiences and to help keep the memory of the Holocaust alive. I'm now going to talk to you about the Holocaust in numbers. Okay, I've given you some um, information there and stories about particular people who were impacted by the Holocaust but we're going to look at the number aspect of it just now. now you'll recognise the photographs there on the slide of the school and there are approximately 1,150 pupils who currently attend Armadale Academy. The number of people killed during the Holocaust as I mentioned to you earlier on is roughly estimated to be around 6 million. Now to put that into perspective for you, 6 million people is greater than live in the whole of Scotland. The population of Scotland just now is around about 5.5 million. If you were to spend 6 million days on planet Earth, you would need to live to the ripe old age of 16,438 years old. And if you look at our school roll of around 1,150 and imagine that number of people being killed every day during the Holocaust, it would take 5,454 days or just over 15 years before you reach the figure of 6 million. And if you didn't miss a single day at school, either from primary 1 to primary 7, or stayed with us throughout secondary school from first year right up to the end of sixth year, it would take you over 2,429 years of school before you reached a figure of 6 million. Why do we remember the people that were impacted by the Holocaust then? Well, the average age of Holocaust survivors is now 85 years old. There are over a thousand of them who are over a hundred. And in the next 15 years, it is very likely that most of these people will no longer be with us. 
So by the time you have children that are of secondary school age, there will be very, very few people left alive on this planet who have experienced the Holocaust firsthand. It's therefore up to us and our children and our grandchildren in the future to pass on the stories of these people and make future generations aware of what they and their friends and their family went through. Please keep people like Arek and Trude and Martin and Ruth and the millions of others who did not survive the Holocaust in your thoughts and make sure through you and your children and your grandchildren in the future, make them aware of what happened here to try and make sure that it never happens again. Please take time to take a look at the notice board and social studies that Mrs Gribben has put together. You'll notice it in the corridor when you're walking along the social studies corridor. And remember those who died in the Holocaust. And some of our classes this week will also be looking at the Holocaust and lessons put together by Miss Bridges. Thank you very much for listening. And I hope you found this an interesting and thought-provoking presentation. And I hope you all have a good day. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>